welcome guys i think that we're here so if you guys are, are catching us live on facebook um let us know if you made it and let us know if our audio is okay we're here with uh, aj osborne and um unfortunately we're not joined by our usual tim road today but we're going to be talking with aj we're going to have a, a great conversation about wealth building um overcoming adversity challenges and, and uh, it's going to be a, a great uh, a great conversation so uh, before we get into that though i don't know uh, how many of you guys are aware that we uh, just came out with a new journal that's on Amazon. It's the One Life Roadmap Journal. And essentially what it does is it walks people everything through everything that they need to do to get their life on track or to get excited about their life. And I, I don't know if you guys, hopefully you guys can't, can see it now. Uh, sorry if you guys saw my Zoom, zoom screen there. Um, it's, a, it's a journal that walks you through a through Z on, on what you need to do to, to dream it, plan it, and live it. And so it'll take you through creating your vision. It'll help you uh, upgrade and identify, you know, what you need to do to level up your finances, uh, identify the key relationships in your life, and then also figure out what you need to do to improve your wellness. And, you know, we talk about uh, mental, emotional, and, and spiritual wellness. And so the whole, it, it really is a, a holistic tool that can, um, that you can use. Uh, it's a great tool to give to, to somebody who is um, just getting out into the world, whether they graduated or, or even for people who are, are at a, at a pivoting point in their life. So you can go to onelifefullylive.org slash Amazon, and it'll take you straight to the Amazon um, link there. All right. Well, hopefully all of the internet and all the technology is working. I mentioned we're here with AJ Osborne and some of you guys might be familiar with him, but this is um, his first uh, his first experience with the One Life community. So uh, I think some of you guys are going to be in for a real treat. And uh, I, I see him as someone being a, a mainstay uh, amongst our amongst our community. So AJ, um, welcome and, and thanks for joining us today, first of all. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. So in a nutshell, to kind of give you and those of you who aren't aware uh, about One Life is About, we, we kind of touched on it a little bit. But one of the things in the journal that the journal walks people through is what we call the One Life Fulfillment Triangle. And Tim has, has likened it to, to, you know, where people can find their groove, you know, or, or, you know, where people can find where they fit in, their niche, their you know, their place. And it, it's at the center of three essential things. And it's, uh, you know, what we find is, is not only success, but fulfillment is found at the, the center of uh, someone's passions, what they're really excited about, their talents, what they're good at, and then opportunity in the marketplace, um, you know, where there are ways to, to make money out, you know, out in the world and, you know, where someone can appreciate those talents and those passions. And AJ's written a book. Um, and, uh, it's a, it's a book on, on wealth building and, and a unique way to build wealth, something that, um, you know, not, frankly, not, is not the typical real estate book that you might read. But um, what I love is that he is also someone who's just had a great journey and a great story of, um, of triumph, really. So, AJ, why don't you fill us in on all the gaps, catch us up on what you've been doing, what you do, and then, you know, if, if, if you could think about how, how your story fits into you know, that fulfillment triangle. How did you find out what you were passionate about? How did you identify what you were good at? And then, you know, tell us about how you, you took that to the marketplace and had success and are now helping, you know, other people have that same kind of success. No, absolutely. Um, you know, I hope that the way that uh, I went through that, most people don't have to. Uh, it's, it's better to learn these things the easy way than the hard way. But um, that tends to be how life is. A lot of these things we don't realize or understand until we go through a lot of trials. Um, you know, I I was uh, in sales. Uh, you know, I'd been married uh, for a long time. So I, I got married and was going through sales and my wife helped uh uh, us get started in that because anyone that's in sales knows how that works. Um, but it uh, ended up working out for me. I liked sales because as a lot of us know, uh, when most of this stuff that we're talking about and things that I found out, um, it's about trying to control what we can control. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons finance can be so frustrating. And it's also another reason um, health problems can be so frustrating. Uh, is I liked sales because I felt like I was in control of my future. I liked sales because I felt like if I wanted to make more money, I could go make more money. 
Um, and that was extremely appealing to me. And one of the things though that I learned along the way was um, I was at the end of the day, I was a middleman. So I think I kind of fooled myself into thinking that I was financially free or I was my own boss, you know, when really I had no control over that revenue coming in. I didn't own it. It was, you know, it was sales. Um, and I've always been kind of a, a workaholic. I can get very unbalanced um, in that realm. And uh, I was living in a, in a time where I, after I realized, you know, I, I had some business transactions that went poorly and I'm like, you know what, there's a pretty big difference be between being rich and being wealthy and being rich means you make a lot of money, but being wealthy means you don't have to work for money. And uh, when I understood that it changed the frame of mind that I had it, where I was going, what I was doing. And um, I think I realized that I have a lot of, I had a lot of work to do. So we decided that we wanted to go into something else that was uh, allow us to control our time, not just our income. I wanted to be able to control my time. And so we started investing. We started doing introspection where we're like, you know, I'm not happy doing what I'm doing. Um, and I just felt like I was on a treadmill, which I think a lot of people can relate to. It was like, if I don't get out there and make a sell, I don't, I don't make money. And uh, if I don't make money, my kids don't eat and I can't live a life that I want. And so what turned out to be my, my biggest, um, benefit ended up being uh, probably my worst nightmare because I didn't see a way out. Right. And when I was working, when we were, when I was looking at my life and how it was living, we, we knew that we needed to make the move. We didn't know how, but we ended up going into real estate. Um, but I kind of merged something different. So I knew the benefits of real estate are off obvious, right? So for those people, they like real estate because it allows them to have passive income and it allows them to separate their time from money. But one of the problems I had was I wanted uh, a little more upside. I was used to making sales and uh, buying businesses and I, I, was a, a, I was good at operations. And so we focused on self-storage because self-storage offered a lot of levers to us to control that revenue source, right? So there was more things that we could do to improve the asset, which we started getting into. And uh, we started building that up. Um, it couldn't have been more better timing uh, in our life. And uh, uh, what actually ended up, I view as financially saving my life, my life and my life's family because I became uh, completely paralyzed out of the blue. So I, um, uh, I was working my sales job and we were buying up storage facilities to try to create passive income. Uh, one day my leg started hurting uh, within hours. I couldn't walk. Um, within a few days, I was put into a coma and I was paralyzed from head to toe when I came out of the coma. So um, we just had our fourth child at the time. And uh, my wife uh, now stuck with a um, uh, husband on machines in the hospital that helped me breathe and everything else like that. <laughs> I was, you know, barely hanging on by a thread. Uh, she you know, we were protected financially when this happened. Um, I, you know, a few months later, my boss came in the hospital and let me go. Obviously, I couldn't work because uh, I was, didn't even know when I was leaving the hospital. But um, I laid on machines for, and couldn't speak. I couldn't communicate at all for 10 weeks. And then we stayed in a long-term care facility for, um, Oh, it was a few months. And then I was released to go home, still paralyzed, uh, where I went home and my wife and, uh, my brother moved in to help take care of me. And that became my new life. I, uh, my treadmill, so to speak, stopped completely. I was no longer able to do anything. And this ability for me to do nothing, <laughs> to be able to try to heal. Um, this turned out to be the greatest blessing that we'd ever received. And it was trying times ahead of us, but 
through that, you know, we became a lot better. And it also, it, it also changed a lot of my focus where time for me was what everybody wants and control of. Um, once that happened, time was the only thing I cared about. I just wanted time to be with my kids and my wife uh, before it was gone. And so, uh, you know, we, we spent a lot more focus on how to create that. I didn't go back to my sales job. Um, we started focusing a lot more on investing in passive income and growing that. I've started multiple businesses since, um, but all that I was in control of and that that revenue source coming in um, was diversified from my time. So if I wanted to go do something else, if I needed to go do something else, I could. And this message became obviously very important to me. Um, I remember sitting in the hospital thinking about going home for the first time. They were going to let me home for a couple hours. And uh, it was Christmas morning. So I was thinking about what the kids were going to get. And I wasn't worried about losing the house. I wasn't worried about my kids not getting Christmas presents. Um, all I really thought about was uh, how excited I was to be home. I was, you know, had to be taken care of for those couple hours, but the hospital was going to let me go home. And uh, I was so excited to see the kids open the presents and see what their faces would be like and to be home with my children. Um, then they, after that, they took me back to the hospital. But um, my family was able to live um, normal, normal is a relative word, but they were, my children were able to live and my wife, a, a semi-normal life. Um, you know, I didn't disrupt my children's whole world. It didn't throw them into where all of a sudden, I don't know how to deal with my dad being hooked to tubes. And now we're moving, losing the house. And now we're in financial chaos. Now that never happened. Um, and then when I got home, I just spent time with them and they helped me get better. Uh, so, you know, that, once again, like I said at the beginning, I, I hope nobody has to go through <laughs> the, the, the journey the way I have, but um, I'm, I'm grateful for everything, you know, kind of the way that I've been and what I've been through. Um, and it's developed a huge passion in me to share the message of, you know, financial freedom is, it, it, it's, it's more about time, it's about resources, it's about living your life to your full capacity. And that's, never been more important. Um, we live in a world that is constantly changing. Um, and security, what the nine to five and working, you know, for corporate America security, that's pretty much gone. That's pretty much an illusion at this point. Although most of us keep playing that game and it doesn't work out well for the most of us. Yeah. Wow. So AJ, I'm, I'm over here having to think, and we're going to have a conversation about self-storage real estate. And we, <laughs> I think that there's a, a much more important conversation that um, needs to be had. And, and um, I know that a lot of the One Life community can, can resonate uh, and appreciate. And, and although none of them, uh, or, or, or I'm sure few of them have dealt with uh, the magnitude of, of, of challenges, uh, I think that we are all we're all dealt with these, these crucibles. And, you know, one, one thing that I'm really grateful for being around, uh, you know, just the one life community is that, uh, the majority of, of people within the community use those crucibles as an opportunity to grow. And we see so many broken people and we see so many hurt people out in the world right now. And, you know, with social media and the videos that are, I mean, th these are hurt people and, and, um, you know, who've dealt with the same kind of challenges and you've, you've had the, the fortitude mentally, physically to, to use those challenges uh, to better yourself. And um, I want to just honor and commend you for that. And um, thank you. It's a, it's for sure an inspiration. Um, so let's, let's go back to a couple of, of, of things though, because you talked about how, how financial freedom, you know, for, for a lot of people, it, it ends up, all, you know, coming back to this time or family or, uh, you know, they're, 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 they're always 
tends to be a bigger reason for it. And you talked about being in control. And I think a lot of people in our community are in, uh, they're, they're, they're in a few places. Um, a lot of them are, are working regular, you know, what we would call a regular job, but are looking to either, they're either starting a side hustle or they have, you know, they're, 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 they're wanting to do that. They're wanting to jump ship, but they don't, you know, they haven't done that yet. Or uh, a good portion of them are entrepreneurs themselves and are in, um, you know, a lot of them are in the, the earlier phases or in the building phase. And so you talked about being in control and, you know, going from a place where you were in a job to being in a place where you weren't able to work, but you were stable, able to provide for your family. So can you talk about like that progression or, or talk about, you know, what, um, you know, we talk about our roadmap and charting our, our vision, like what, either what were you thinking about or, or what can people, you know, how, how do they, how do they find their why amidst all the BS that's coming up? Or, you know, I don't well, know, it's a bad question, but I think, you know, what I'm trying to get no, at. no, that's actually a great question. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm really big on this because this is a really important topic. Um, when you talk about control, you can't control your life unless you control yourself. And is anyone that jumps on social media or the news or whatnot, they see how out of control everyone is. Um, and I call this emotional hijacking. Um, what happens is we are all emotional, hi emotionally hijacked by so many things that are happening in the world that really have nothing to do with us. And they actually are a major detriment, although it's spun as a positive or it's spun as it's important and it's not, and it's not at all important. And 99.999999% of everything that happens in the world, not only has nothing to do with you, it's detrimental to you. And you live in a circumstance that is completely individualized to yourself and where you live, what you're doing. And it, you need to help yourself before you can help anybody else. And that is so mixed up today. And we're so torn in a- Is that what we're seeing, right? Like at scale, I think about people who are, they don't want to deal with themselves. So they hop on social media so that they see everyone else's problems. And it, it's, it's kind of a soothing to them, right? Like I'm, I'm, as you're oh, talking about it, I'm sitting there wondering, like, no, Damn, exactly. I, I do the same thing. I hop on the news and all of a sudden- I don't have to worry about me. I can point a finger at somebody else or I can yes. you know, externalize yeah. that problem. A hundred percent, which is, first of all, why do, why do you care? Why do I care? Why does any of us care? Right. And none of that stuff is out there for the betterment of you. It's not. Um, noise is extremely valuable, extremely valuable. And as humans, for the most part, we are vastly out of control of ourselves. And we live in a herd mentality that we do what the herd does. Um, you cannot be successful in life if you act that way. Because once again, you know, we live in a herd mentality, but we're not all sitting in the same herd, right? I can't, if, if the herd in another place doing another thing does something different, that why does that affect me yet we're all jumping on board and what that ends up happening is you have a lot of people that are not progressing but they're being very reactive this is a sure fire way to fail at family a sure fire way to fail at happiness and finance if you're reactive to what's going on in the world you can never be successful um, because the world gets paid to get you to look, spend time on things that you shouldn't. And that's the way the world works. And so the first thing is, is one of the things that I did very on, I said, listen, I'm going to focus up on me, my family, those around me, and we need to improve my circumstance so I can improve other people. And that's how you help people. That's how you do things. I can help my children. I can help our friends, our family. I can help all my employees. I can help my community. I can make a difference there. The problem with that is those difference, those differences, they take hard work and they take time. So I have to emotionally gain control. And I don't know about you and I don't know about other people, but it seems this is something hard to emotionally be in control of yourself. That sounds easy, but it's really not. 
And anybody that opens up their iPhone and their instant state of being is changed, you are not in control of yourself. And so what you need to understand and what I had to understand is the inputs. I had to change the inputs to change my outputs. And that's what started me on a path of financial freedom. And that's what started me on a path of analyzing what I needed to do and what I needed to get rid of in my life, which is the vast majority of everything. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. They're tired. Everyone's tired, right? You're tired of the nine to five. You're tired of all the problems in the world. You're tired of the way your life is. You're tired of the outcome. You're tired of a bad relationship. You're tired of everything, right? And so it's, it's about taking those inputs that are making you upset, making you tired and changing them. And most of the time it's getting rid of them. And if so, if you want to change your outcome, that's the first place you got to start. You got to start with yourself. You got to emotionally regain control. You got to look at what is actually happens. So whatever you put in creates an output. So I really wanted to change my outputs. I started changing the people I hung around. I started changing the information that I took in and I started changing the way that I acted. That created real change, long lasting change. It's not quick change, right? It's not even easy change. It's way easier to jump on social media, jump on Twitter and make yourself feel good, right? Than it is actually waking up in the morning, exercising, meditating, getting your head on straight, start working for incremental progress in your life. That's hard because it takes time and it's not quick. And so, you know, what I did is I started uh, auditing my day and auditing the outputs. What are the outputs that I want to create? And during the day, I simply started auditing everything that I was doing and changed it as if it wasn't in coordinates with the life that I wanted to live. And that's where it really started. My financial freedom started to, uh, 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 really take hold because before I was being more reactive. I needed money. I'd go out and make a sell, right? If I didn't make the sell, I was mad and I had to go make more on it, right? It was just complete um, retroactive. Although I felt that I was in control, the reality was I wasn't. I wasn't in control at all. And so by investing, owning the source of revenue that I had, taking the time to you know worry about me, um, that really changed changed uh, the financial outcome. Now, I ended up getting sick. And when I went to the hospital, I learned another change. And I learned another part of control. And that was my body, my physical self and my health and my well being, which um, I thought I was in control, but I wasn't doing a good job. And obviously, there's a lot of that stuff that's not in our control. I had no control that my body decided to destroy my nerves and sever my brain from my body and leave me fully paralyzed. Um, that I had no control over that. And I could have sat and dwelled on that, um, made excuses, or I could have said, hey, this is the new state. My inputs now have to change again, right? So my outcome, my state has been, so I got to focus on what I can control. And when you're in, it's amazing how all the BS just disappears when you're in those situations. When all of a sudden you're paralyzed, you're in a wheelchair, I really don't care what's going on in the world. I really don't care what other people think. Um, you know, I was laying hooked to tubes and people had to bathe me for months. It, you know, it was like <laughs> nothing else really mattered. Um, I had to focus on walking. I had to focus on eating. I had to focus on talking. Um, I wanted to be able to hug my children again. Everything else disappeared. And that's how we should act every single day. We should care about the ones that are around us that we have meaningful impact on. So many of us ignore our neighbors, but we spend so much time with strangers that online that we don't know nor care about, and they definitely don't care about you. And that, you know, it, it's baffling when we say it out loud, but that's standard mode of operations for 90% of Americans. And our children are getting left behind, our friends and family, your parents. And that was something I couldn't have happen again. Um, that was something that I, you know, I had to change and I had to change my life. So everything that I did was going to be for my family, for those around me. I was going to help build up my employees. I was going to help others. I was going to build meaningful relationships. 
and have meaningful discussions. And that, that change is really hard if you don't see it because we get stuck so much in the habits and then the habits dictate our life and dictate our output. And all of a sudden, 10 years later, you don't know why you're in the same spot. You're not happy with what you're doing. And you realize once again, you're not living the life that you wanted to live. So it's, I don't want everybody to be jolted, obviously, the way that I was. That's uh, not good. <laughs> That's definitely not what we want. Um, but it is something that we need to remember because at the end of the day, listen, we're all going out. Your treadmill's stopping one way or another. So I don't know if it's today. I don't know if it's tomorrow. I don't know if it's in 30 years, but this game is going to end. So why are you spending time dealing with things that have nothing to do with you and put you in a worse state and change, make your outputs worse? You're ruining your life and it's all your choice. And that's a form of insanity. Yeah. Guys, if you're listening to this and you feel like you're talking, he's talking to you, don't worry. He's actually talking to me. So uh, I'm, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> and that's the crazy part. It really is. I, this is something I still have to deal with every day. I mean, it's like we get because in and we're all fighting against society. We really are. It, it's we are all fighting against society every day because it's so intrusive in a way that it never was before. And it hijacks our lives and it hijacks mine all the time. I have to re-audit. I had to I have to retake control of my life. And if you don't think that you have to, yeah, you're probably the number one person that needs to. Sure. You know, uh, one thing that I would uh Really, and just a quick tip I would give to everybody is to be mindful of, or, or, or just take a look at your notifications on your phone, right? You know, I turn all mine off and I, I have to delete apps because I, I find myself getting pulled, you know, uh, it, you know, trying to be mindful. I find myself reaching for my phone and mindlessly, you know, scrolling to an app. And so, um, yeah, I think we can all take, take small things like that and that make a, a huge difference in our outputs. A couple of things that you mentioned, um, you know, you likened, uh, Tim talks about something called the, his get rich slow plan. You know, everyone wants to get rich quick, but mm. he recommends to get rich slow. And, and one of the things that I think uh, it was never as, it, it's never as explicit as you said, was that the, the journey doesn't start when people start making money. The journey starts when they start working on themselves. The, the journey starts, you know, internally. It's not when they, you know, make an investment or buy a house no. or it, that's, that's not when the journey actually begins, but you mentioned it starts far earlier. And, um, another thing, uh, you, you and Will Smith, you know, echoed similar sentiments. I watched a, a video yesterday and he was talking about a lot of the racial issues that were going on in, in the world. And, and he said that the, the, the solution is for people to look internally. And it's exactly what you said is that, you know, his, his, Part of being the solution is to focus on him, his community, his family, his, you know, work on him. And collectively, if we can all take that, you know, perspective, then then that's going to get us to the solution, you know, and, and, and make people, you know, a lot happier as well. So I, I just I really think that um, but that's it. You know, so many people have have. That's it. <laughs> we yeah. need to work on ourselves. <laughs> well, you're, it's so easy to virtue signal today and to make people think that you're something that you're not. And it, it's once again, the get rich slow is the also get become a better person slow. You're not a better person because you post something on Instagram or Twitter. You're not. I don't care what anybody says. That's just the biggest cop out in the world. I don't care if you post every single day. That has nothing to do with who you are and trying to make other people believe that you're rich, successful, a good dad, that you're a good spouse or a good person in general. Um, nobody cares. Uh, and for you to work on yourself, wake up every morning, spend time listening to your significant other, spend actual time listening to your children, working on being healthier, eating the right foods that you actually spend time working on your finances every single day, that is hard because none of those things change quick. We all know that trust with others is fragile, right? It takes a lifetime to earn it and it takes a moment to ruin it. And so it's, you know, we all, we all simply go to the easiest method or the easiest mode, but none of the actual goals that we want to obtain, happiness in life, feeling good about ourselves, being healthy, right? Having good relationships with our family, um, none of those things are, 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 are gained by 
making a post or doing something quick. These take years and that's good because if it takes years, it means it's gonna last and it means it's gonna be lasting change for you. And the problem is once again with the herd mentality, it's telling you when you need to change and it's telling you what you are. That is bad. That is really, really bad. Instead, you need to change based upon what you're doing, your life circumstances. And you need to work on it every day. You need to work up, uh, wake up and you got to work out. You got to spend time. You got to focus. You got to go to your job. You got to work hard. You got to produce an output for other people. And then you got to start looking at strategies to invest, not something that's going to make you rich, right? You know, quick, but you need to start working on taking baby steps in the right direction. You need to get on the path of financial freedom. You need to get a path of success. And that path is a journey. It's not a jump. It's not quick, but it needs to be repeatable. And that's what a lot of people don't understand, whether it's business or financial freedom. All you are is you're repeating an action that has a good result over and over and over again, right? You have magnitude and volume. Some of these actions seem really big and they seem like big wins and others are small wins. But no matter how you look at it, you got to repeat it. And so you got to keep it going faster and faster and it's got to be um, known and it has to be consistent. So if you do things quickly, and if you get quick hits or you get quick wins, they're almost never repeatable, right? And it's almost never consistent. That is not a way to be successful at all because success takes years. So what you need to do is you need to find a repeatable pattern that can generate a result and it can be done over and over and over again. This is how you scale. This is how you scale life. This is how you scale happiness. This is how you scale relationships. And this is how you scale a good society. And so society is built up more of what we do individually, day by day to those closest around us. It is not how we affect someone in another state or someone that has a different view than you do and you want to force it upon them. That has nothing to do with anything. And that's never worked and never will work. And so we need to focus on ourselves and we need to look 10 years in the future. Where do I want to be in 10 years? And then you got to back end into that and you got to start making a plan. And two, you're not going to have it figured out. You're not going to have the journey known, right? When I thought 10 years in the future, I want to be financially free. I didn't know how I was going to get there. But I knew that's where I wanted. And I started to learn. I started to study. I started to work on myself. I started to get up earlier. I started to figure out what I needed to do to get there. And then as I went through, and I use this analogy a lot, it's like fog, right? Fog, you can only see six feet in front of you. But as you walk, the next seat, six feet clear up. And so you got to start walking so you can see farther down the line. And you feel like it's blind, but it's not, right? And if you're walking down with your head down, staring at your phone, then you're not going anywhere. That's all I got to say about that. This is a, a beautiful analogy, the, the fog. And, um, you know, we do that at our, our One Life retreats as part of our team. And it's something that we've done with, you know, the people who come into our, our, our programs and our community is, is help them create, you know, we've, we've started with the five-year vision. I like 10 because the farther you can see out, you know, the, the, I just the more clear things become. And then I really like what, what you said about, you know, taking the next step of, of just understanding the next six months or the next part, right? Not, not having to have the whole journey figured out. Because yes. I think myself included, um, we stop, we throw up our hands and we go, well, because we don't know all the steps to the recipe, you know, let's just not, let's not, you know, let's avoid it. Let's figure it out. Let's, and, and so um, I think that was great. Um, you know, one thing that I think it would be just huge for you to touch on is, you know, how you landed on on self storage. You know, I think that one of the things that in, in doing some research, I thought that is is a very unique way. I mean, we've had people come on and talk about, uh, you know, investing through real estate and doing the, you know, buy and holds and renting it out. And, and you know, we have a lot of people who, uh, you know, Matty A is a big guy on in flipping and um, you know, we've had these different, uh, multifamilies, you know, we've had these different avenues, uh, you landed on one that I frankly have never, I've heard of it, but I've never heard anyone teaching it or talking about it or saying, Hey, here's, here, here's how to uncover it. Um, yep. so tell us about that journey and, 
share, you know, why you pick that or, or what some of the, you know, advantages for, for, for picking self storage as your route? Well, I think, as you know, now, I think that the herd's doing it. I'm generally not up, open to it. So um, I, if there's anything true in life, it's that the herd is almost always, always wrong. So when I started looking at assets and I started looking at um, all the, what people were investing in and what they were doing, um, I started looking at things that people weren't talking about. Um, and what I found was there was a lot better investments and a lot more that I could put my time into that would generate much better yields and that were safer. And so self-storage fell upon us where nobody was talking about it. And this was in the early 2000s. Um, in fact, it didn't seem to even be something that people wanted. It was almost like, eh, this is self-storage. That's a junkyard kind of thing. But when you started looking at it, you said, wow, everybody needs it. There's massive demand. And I can buy these things and they can cash flow at rates that no other real estate property can't. And where all these other real estate assets, 80% of the entire industry is consolidated amongst these massive institutions and everything else, um, I'm going to have a hard time breaking into those industries. Whereas self-storage, it was the opposite. When we got started, 84% of the industry was owned by single owner operators. And there's more of them than all the Starbucks, McDonald's, and a bunch of other retailers combined. So it's not small, it's huge. And I thought, this doesn't make sense. And we thought, this is going to change because people are going to get sick of not making money in other asset classes. And it did. So the industry has started to consolidate, but it's still nowhere near what it was. So we started buying up um, early 2000s. We survived uh, the Great Recession and that changed everything for self-storage because self-storage outperformed every other asset class in the Great Recession. Um, and people defaulted on their homes and wouldn't default on a 10 by 10 storage unit that they had, which was previously conceived as impossible or that no one would ever lose their home before they lost a storage unit. And that actually became standard mode of operation. Everyone did that and uh, everybody wanted storage. And so what happened is we could deliver and create great product types and great neighborhoods that were functional businesses, charge exceptional amounts and deliver this amazing service to people. And we didn't have to worry about them, you know, li living in there. We'd have to worry about you know, toilets, everything else. It's our property. And if we wanted them out, I kicked them out. It wasn't, it's not complicated. Like you're putting your stuff on my building, like get out if I don't want you out. And so I could do things like dynamic pricing. I could add insurance. I could sell boxes, moving trucks. I could do all this stuff to add value to that asset that's impossible in most other real estate asset classes. And yet we still have month to month and the average stay is like a year, it's like a, somewhere right around 12 to 18 months. Um, so when I started looking at it, it was a- It's like an apartment building without the headaches. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, it, it, it was a far superior way for me of doing business. And so, you know, we accumulated uh, uh, over a hundred million in assets with just me and my partner um, in just over a decade. And uh, it was something that we could do very efficiently. And the runway to get into this asset class was enormous because all of the fragmentation across the entire market. So there's all of this inventory that we could buy. And so, I didn't feel that I could compete in apartment buildings. I didn't feel I could compete in flipping single family homes. And two, when I looked at it, the yield just to me wasn't worth my time. I'm like, wait, I'm going to spend how much and do how much work to get a hundred bucks a door. I was like, that doesn't make sense for me. Um, not that it's not good and not that it's not a great investment, right? It is. And it plays very well. I mean, I tell people probably the easiest thing you could ever do is seriously just buy a fourplex, pay it off in 30 years, and there's your retirement. Um, but if I wanted to grow, grow big, and I wanted to create financial freedom in the short term, it was through self-storage offered benefits that no other asset class did. And as we did this, and as it changed, obviously, my life, and as it changed, um, the, the way that you know we were living and the way that 
we could operate and I gained all these benefits from it. Um, once again, sitting in the hospital, I'm like, other people need to know about this. And so that's why I wrote the book. It's a complete playbook from end to end on how to do it. And there was such limited and poor information out there on it. I just took everything that we did. Case studies, we own a, I own a technology company in the space. We own the largest co-op in self-storage. We're, you know, I, I'm a keynote spoke, speaker for the industry. Now, self-storage has changed. Um, it's kind of come out of obscurity, right? People are now going, this is awesome. Wall Street wants in, funds want in. Uh, and when people, when I talk to people, they go, yeah, but self-storage is hot. And I'm like, yeah, self-storage is hot, but so is every other asset class. And all those other asset classes, they've been hot for decades upon decades upon decades. So I'm like, yeah, self-storage may be hot, but it's still in an it, it, it's not in its infancy anymore, but it's it's a teenager, right? It's so uh, right. where all these other industries had matured out. And I just felt like in a mature industry, it was going to be really hard for me to get the results I wanted. And this industry I can grow with and it can grow with me. And as it matures, I'll become wealthier. Yeah. The book has a great title. It's called The Investor's Guide to Growing Wealth in self Storage: the step-by-step -step playbook for turning a real estate asset into a thriving self-storage business. Damn, that's a great search title. It's on Amazon. Um, AJ, is there any other place where people uh, can kind of follow you or stay connected? Uh, yeah, my online? Instagram, AJ Osborne. If you go there, I'm posting stories and pictures and things. Um, then also... My site, Self Storage Income. If you go there, there's uh, I have information, videos, modelers. Um, you can get the book at selfstorageincome.com. And then I uh, have the largest podcast in self storage. It's called Self Storage Income too. So make it easy. Uh, and you can go to that podcast, and we have you know tons of episodes where we talk everything about the the asset. Um, so any of those means, I mean, once again, the site emails me directly, Instagram DM me directly. And then the podcast, we really get a dive really deep into the stuff. So cool. this is great. Um, what a, what a beautiful conversation guys. And I'd encourage you guys to go and, um, look into this. I mean, it's, uh, you guys are getting it on the ground floor. So this is, this is fantastic. It looks like the, uh, the podcast is self storage income. Um, on Instagram, AJ Osborne with an E. AJ Osborne with an E. Don't forget that. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in today. This has been a, a fantastic conversation. We mentioned uh, at the beginning before we um, started talking that the One Life Roadmap Journal is also out on Amazon. And this Wednesday, July 15th, we have a, uh, a, a essentially a yoga class with, uh, with Janice Burt. She is uh, one of our, our certified One Life guides. She's going to be coming on and doing a yoga experience for you guys. So um, get registered, onelifefullylive.org slash join, and it'll be uh, live on a, uh, on a Zoom call as, uh, as well. Uh, AJ, thanks again for doing this. Uh, guys, go buy the book, go subscribe to the podcast, and um, hopefully this is uh, the first of many conversations that, uh, that you have with the community here. I appreciate it.